Baker, health and fitness enthusiast and mental health advocate are three words that describe my guest today. She's been featured in the Jersey Shore magazine for her amazing baking skills and she's also on a mission to raise awareness on mental health issues. She is the awesome Michelle Light and welcome to today's show. Welcome to the Mind, Body and Soul podcast with John Morris. Inspiring, motivating and educating you in finding balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. Learn from and listen to a man who has a wealth of life experience, from business to bodybuilding, artist to author, and has learned to deal with his own physical and mental wellness. But that's not all. Each week John interviews and picks the minds of special guests from all around the world and from all walks of life. From actors to authors, wrestlers to warriors, business owners to life coaches, and so much more. Welcome to today's episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with John Morris. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children, all ages, welcome to another exciting episode of the Mind, Body, and Soul podcast with me as your host, John Morris. It is always a pleasure to be here with you and present to you a show that hopefully inspires you, motivates you, and educates you. In finding the balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life, I've got a really special guest here with us today because this is one of the first podcasts that she's ever, ever done. And I'm delighted. She comes all the way from Jersey City in the good old US of A. She's been featured in the Jersey Journal. She's a baker, a mental health and fitness enthusiast and an all-around talented lady. Please welcome the wonderful and lovely Michelle Light. Michelle, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me, John. It is a pleasure. It really is. It's really awesome. Michelle, for the folks at home that maybe have never encountered you, because this, this is now going out to a worldwide audience, which is wonderful, share with us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. So I do a lot of different <laughs> things, as we've discussed. And for me, how it all started, uh, so I've been baking from a young age. I started in the kitchen. My mother is German, so I learned to make a lot of different... Wow. I learned to make a lot of different German things from her, like plum Plaumkuchen, which mm -hmm. is a German plum cake. I learned to make Stollen, which is traditional German Christmas bread, much better than fruit cake, in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and my paternal grandmother too I, she was always cooking in the kitchen so I grew up around things like that and I just really I loved to do it I would bake on my own I had this little German recipe book and my German was not fluent as a child at all but I would look through it and just the measurements still made sense so I would try to to make things on my own and experiment and then in high school I took what we have, it's called vocational classes for, um, you can take cosmetology, baking, auto shop, wood shop, what have you. And I chose to go into the culinary side of things. So I entered into baking competitions through wow. an organization called Skills USA. Mm -hmm. And I was the Pennsylvania um, Cumberland County champion in 2008, wow. I believe. And then I went on to the States actually and I came in second place. So I was a state champ too. And I just really loved it. You know, baking for me was like breathing. Yeah. And anytime I was sad or upset, it was something that I would always turn to. Wow. So I went to culinary school. I became a, a professional pastry chef. And I had done that for about the last 10 years of my life. And Along the way, other things came up. I, I've always really loved music as well. I had always sang in the choir as a child. I uh, am self-taught ukulele player. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, music has also been like a, another just like natural <laughs> language for me. And I uh, did some, some acting in high school, like Shakespeare, musicals, things like that. I've always loved it. And along the way, other things evolved too. <laughs> so... The mental health and fitness aspect that you mentioned, I personally do suffer from depression. Okay. I've experienced depression uh, numerous times. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, it's such a difficult thing for people to experience. And there's a lot of stigma around it. Yeah. And I was reading about, you know, what kind of things can you do to help yourself with depression? Because I had tried the medication route. And while I do recommend it for many people, 
especially with a mental health professional yeah. guiding you. I didn't feel that it was right for me. So I was reading and reading and I found an article one day by a woman who said that powerlifting in the gym, mm -hmm. lifting weights changed her life and the effect of mental, uh, uh, the effect of fitness on mental health. Yep. And so I started going to the gym and I actually did get into powerlifting versus cardio based workouts. And that could have an impact too, but mm -hmm. really going to the gym had such a positive effect on my mental health. And there's a lot of mental health issues within my family as well that I've experienced growing up. So it's yeah. just something that I'm so passionate about talking about. And although I'm not a licensed professional myself, I do like to learn about it yeah. and, and just educate others on it and help people too. And just, man, the journey that I've had uh, throughout my fitness kind of, I mm -hmm. wouldn't call it a career, but just, you know, going to the gym and the different levels I've experienced yeah. of, you know, lifting weights and all the different things you can do and really just seeing for myself the power it has on positively affecting your mental health was like mind blowing for me. I was like, why didn't anyone ever tell me this before? It's it's an amazing thing, and obviously, like you say, we've, we've, we have got so much material and so much to unpack with you today, um, and, I, and I love that, you know, and that's one of the, the, the things that, if it's okay to talk to you about, uh, what we'll start with is, is mental health is a good part, as, you know, good place as any to start with. When we're talking about depression, what were some of the things and the symptoms of depression that you would personally suffer? Yeah, absolutely. We'll get into that. So I want to say when I first noticed it was in college. Okay. So I mean, college is a really over or university. It's a really overwhelming time for yeah. a lot of people. We're away from our families. We're completely on our own. We're kind of wild and free. And so there's just no boundaries that you can take every impulse you have. And for me, it was such a difficult time navigating things on my own. Yeah. And you know, you, you're a stranger, you're a, you're a small fish in a big pond. And for me, it was a, an overwhelming experience. Culinary school, the, the one I went to is very much like military school. It's okay. very strict. It's right. very regimented while you still do have your freedoms. It's very different. It's not, yeah. It's yeah. not a place where you are going to frat parties on the weekends. I mean, <laughs> there was still some of that, but in culinary school, we don't so much have yeah. fraternities so just you know the relationships that I would navigate like romantic relationships uh -huh. and friendships it was difficult yeah. and and I felt a little bit isolated a little bit lonely you're around so many people but yeah. just you don't know who to talk to or really I mean you're like I said you're far away from your family too mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't have strong family support at the time either yeah. so it was a very difficult time and I noticed myself kind of, you know, my mood was changing. Mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. upset all the time. I was yeah. scared. I, I also had a bit of social anxiety yeah. too, to the point where I'll share this story because this could be helpful for someone. Please, yeah. I had such bad social anxiety in college that I, this is a true story. I would sometimes take my breakfast from the cafe and eat it in the bathroom stall. Wow. I was just so overwhelmed by all of that interaction. I come from a small town in Pennsylvania called uh -huh. Carlisle. So, you know, being from a small town like that and then going to this yeah. university where there are thousands of people, it's just, you know, very different. And I had a hard time adjusting, definitely. I was uh, not a popular kid in high school. I was kind of like, a, you know, the awkward nerd type. So. <laughs> Yeah, college was when I really, really started to experience the depression. And I okay. remember going to a psychiatrist and telling them, and you know, my first experience with a psychiatrist, I felt like they were so cold yeah. and they just kind of get straight to the point and say, well, hey, you can try this medication. Yeah. They don't really discuss with you what other options are available because, you know, they're there to prescribe you the pharmaceuticals. And we didn't have things like CBD yeah. at the time. And certainly marijuana was too mm -hmm. taboo. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't really being discussed in the medical community 10 years ago, to my knowledge, at the extent that it is now. So those were not options. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, just a just a really difficult time navigating yeah. my way through that. The the medications for me personally, what I experienced with them, uh, I didn't feel like myself at all. Yeah. It, they made me extremely tired. I would miss class sometimes because I was right. so exhausted from that kind of come down yeah. that you get after a certain yeah. amount of hours on the medication. And, you know, I said, this is not for me. I can't live this way. I'd rather try to talk to a therapist and or do other things to manage my anxiety and my depression then feel kind of I felt like a zombie it was just not me at all and so I decided not to take the the medication route and after college when I moved to Jersey City I was living in Jersey City I didn't know anyone I was here by myself Uh, I had started over from scratch essentially okay to start a new journey and I was working in Manhattan in New York City which is you know a whole other yeah absolutely so that's been a really really incredible journey Um, but I want to say about four years ago was when I found that article that Mm -hmm. I was talking about before where the woman explained about how exercise had changed her life and so it's just within the past four years that I've made such amazing leaps and bounds with my own mental health it, it's an amazing thing. And, and again, there's so much to unpack, you know, from there, you know, first of all, folks, you know, I, I've got to say that, you know, some people are, and a lot of it comes down to our DNA and, and what's in us already. Some of us are more prone to being depressed and feeling miserable. Okay. And that's, that's the first thing that you've got to know is, you know, some of this stuff is rooted within you uh, already. Um, one of the things that, you know, I, I normally say to folks is, you, you know, finding the root causes, because again, doctors and physicians and every, everyone out there will probably prescribe you some form of medication because that is their job essentially to do. But what I try to look at a lot more, and, and you look with holistic therapists in particular, and some of the, the things that Michelle had mentioned, um, it, it's, it's important to try and find the root cause of what maybe started this. And Michelle made a great point that for her, um, her um, depression journey, mental health, anxiety, all these things began in college. What tends to happen is if, if you're anything like me, you know, you, you go to school and I grew up in a very, pri- you know, small primary school. Then you go to a bigger high school and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually you either go out into the working world or you go into to college and university, like Michelle was saying. And, you know, it can be so overwhelming. Now, I know when I moved to Scotland, you know, from England, that it was so overwhelming for me. And my brain eventually actually shut down on a number of occasions. I've just, again like, again, like Michelle was saying, I was a walking zombie. I existed, but nothing was actually coming in, you know, and I probably made some bad decisions at that point as well, based on what was going on. And hey, this is an honest, this is an honest thing. And this is why I want to have that conversation is because it's so important. So Michelle was talking about the anxiety. These are all, um, very typical symptoms of what, you know, again, the overwhelm. And I think if, if you can label it as that, um, you know, because it leads to so many things, you know, when, you, you, when you're feeling depressed and you're feeling, you know, just uncomfortable and sad and everything else, um, you know, you don't oftentimes want to be around a lot of people. You want to be, particularly if you're more of an introvert, you want to be by yourself a lot of the time, even though you don't want to be by yourself. You want to be around people, but you can't be around people. And this is the struggle that a lot of people face. I've got to say as well, folks, with depression, of course, it, it, yes, it can be chemical. Yes, it can be something that we go through in a period in our lives. If it's chemical and it's in you, it's going to be more of a regular occurrence. And again, to be aware of that, do the research. Um, you know, and, and, and I think it's, it's really interesting to get to unpack this as well, because like you were saying, when you're feeling down and you're feeling depressed and you're, you're on ang- anxious anxiety journey, um, it comes in so many different ways and times that you think, oh, this is going to be really big, really exciting. When that reality hits, it's like a giant wave that comes over you and you're like, oh my goodness, how do I cope with this and study for degrees and education and everything? How were you at that point in terms of your studies? Yeah, I think about this a lot, actually. <laughs> I... Uh, so I'll start with this. I recently mm-hmm. saw a psychiatrist for ADD because I've been okay. having a lot of trouble focusing right. and I've been doing a lot of research and ADD goes undiagnosed in women. Yes. It's more often diagnosed in boys yeah. and men as ADHD, but women mm-hmm. and girls tend not to have the hyperactivity component right. of it. So 
I was explaining my symptoms saying, you know, it's so hard for me to focus. And the pandemic right. has definitely added to oh, that yeah. because yeah. I'm at home all the time. I work from home now. P previously, before the pandemic, I was not working from home. I was right. in an office. And before that, I was in kitchens. It's for a the big adjustment. Time. It's a very big yeah. adjustment. So you're you're at home all the time. You have the same scenery in front of you all the time. You are always in your own space. And that triggers something in the brain. Yeah. So I had spoken to my therapist about this. And then I'll explain the college aspect of it too. Yeah, yeah. She said right now, at the beginning of the pandemic, so back in March, when it had really hit us over here in the US, when we were getting shut down and yeah. everything was just starting, I think I spoke to her maybe a month after that when I was really struggling with it. And she said, everyone that's going through this in the beginning stages, your brain is not accustomed to this. So, yeah. so many people, it was like they were going haywire, yeah. myself included. And I was having horrible nightmares. Oh, I wow. was just it was a really tough time. And I know uh, a lot of other people had a, a tough time as well. And, and she said, uh, when we're thrown off our routines, yes. when our routines are mixed up and we don't have that normalcy or that thing that, you know, we kind of cling to subconsciously yeah. without realizing it, that it really just throws you for Absolutely. a loop. And if someone doesn't tell you that you think you're crazy and yeah. you don't know what's going on you're like something must be wrong with me but really it's such a normal cognitive function when your world is essentially turned upside down just one thing about that actually michelle and i think it's a really important um point to make is routine is a, is a really important thing and you know my wife and i for example are very very different people she's very level a lot of the time um she's she's like a never changing season and that's sometimes something i really really admire because i'm all over the place at times i never know how i'm going to be when i get up in the morning but one of the things i found in particular when i was having battles with anxiety and depression and, and medical mishaps and whatnot from you know uh, doctors and, and whatnot when they were trying out new um, drugs and things um it, it was the whole thing of if my routine was normal, like I could get up in the morning and I could be in the gym and then I could work and then, and that was my normal routine, that's fine. But if my wife said to me, oh, we've got a family get together this weekend. Well, for me, people really, really send my brain spinning to the point it could be, you know, we've got a family get together three weeks from now. Well, I would spend that pretty much that entire three weeks going absolutely insane. But the crazy thing about it, um, when Michelle was saying about, um, uh, when, when, you know, the, being in your own space and certainly with the lockdown and everything, I knew when I was living by myself and I was a single guy, if I could go out and meet somebody, it felt great. I knew I had that excitement. But one of the things I found when I was by myself and I knew I couldn't see anybody, I was trapped in this apartment. And again, like Michelle was saying, you get in your own head and it can be really, really difficult then and fear can set in. One of the triggers for me, actually, I don't know about you, Michelle, but when I, I would draw the, the blinds in the windows, when I would put them down at night and then close them, that would set off to me and I would feel trapped. So I ended up actually not closing any blinds in the apartment at all uh, at any point I lived there, just so I could feel connected to the outside world. Um, but yes, sorry, please continue. Um, it's just oh, as no, a side I, <laughs> no, I have something to add about that. But Please do. I'll, I have to answer your first question about how <laughs> I how I handled this all in college. Ooh. So uh, I was a horrible student. I would categorize myself as pretty intelligent, but uh, it was hard for me to focus. Yeah. I was just so overwhelmed all the time, going back to what we were saying before, how overwhelming just like being in a new places yeah. and all these people. And I had such a hard time focusing some of the material made no sense to me oh. at all i would have to get tutoring outside of class and it just i didn't have the best grades mm -hmm. i applied to grad school at nyu of all places which I could not afford by the way and i didn't get accepted but i you know i was like let me shoot for the stars yeah absolutely um, my grades were not good enough to be accepted into NYU. I got into another graduate program instead, uh, but it was it was difficult. And yeah. I had not been diagnosed with ADD okay. at, by psychiatrists that I was seeing, but I wasn't explaining to them that I had trouble focusing. And yeah. I didn't even know how to convey that. I didn't realize that I was having trouble with that. To me, I was just 
saying, oh, well, I guess I'm just not that good at college. I guess uh -huh. I'm just not, you know, these subjects just aren't something interesting to me. So of course I'm not doing well in them, but look. Do you, your son or daughter struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach to the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Like a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step-by-step -step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening, and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire, or they get that goal, or they hit that big target, or whatever it might be. And also, as a trifecta, I am committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the early bird special offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to really develop that passion to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh, you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one, understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch. Let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other. And I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks take care god bless and i will see you soon looking back not only the depression and the anxiety that i was experiencing but undiagnosed add yeah. can really have an effect on you absolutely if you don't have if you don't have tools and things to cope with that mm -hmm. so going back to your story where you said if you have a family gathering that's kind of like a, a really nervous reaction for oh you. yeah I just had a conversation with my therapist a couple of weeks back um, because you sound exactly like my partner. So he he is very much an introvert and uh -huh. I'm kind of like an introverted extrovert. You know, I can yep. kind of ebb and flow when I need to. And it sounds like you absolutely can too, yep. depending on what you need to do. You will have the right mindset for that yeah. and you can just apply it. But what she explained to me is that basically there are two different types of people and some of us recharge by being with people yep. and some of us recharge by being alone. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that was such an earth shattering concept, but when she explained that to me, I was like, that makes so much yep. sense because my boyfriend loves a lot of alone time mm -hmm. and I prefer to be with people when I'm not in this yeah. anxious state where I'm like thinking about well what are we going to talk about if we hang out or where are we going to go what are we going to do all of these questions spiraling in my mind and causing me to like panic internally and then I don't go out and see people yeah. even though I want to hang uh -huh. out with someone like you had said in the beginning and it's such a 
a strange feeling to convey, but I think you said it perfectly. What, what makes it even harder, I suppose, for me is I've, I've got a family, again, that are very level-headed people. Um, and I married into, obviously, into that family where I'm all over the place. And it's really difficult for them because they've never had anybody in the family that is, you know, all over the place. And, and like you say, you know, I know if I'm at a family gathering or, uh, you know, or, or a speaking situation, for example, I'm going to be a nervous wreck before going on. Um, a couple of weeks ago, and, and folks that have been watching the show um, will, will know this because I've shared this uh, quite a bit. I actually worried myself sick over speaking to people on, on, the, on, on these shows. And I'm thinking, right, okay, this is what you wanted. It's just you and the other person at this point. There's no one else seeing this until obviously it goes out live. And I literally worried myself sick to the point that every bone in my body felt like it was corroding. It was just unbearable pain. Um, I thankfully learned a lot from that and developed a teaching on worry, which is, is really helping a lot of people already. But it, it's a strange thing when you know you're going to be fine in the situation. You know that you can talk to people. You know, you can pick up conversations. You're going to be, you know, there's nothing that's essentially going to go wrong. But in our brains, sometimes it can get away with us, particularly if you're more of a creative mind like Michelle and I. Uh, you can literally just start, you know, spiraling things in your own brain that aren't even there. One of the things that Michelle picked on that I just want to touch on quickly before, because again, I know we'll, we'll dart around a lot of the place, um, but diagnosis is the most important thing, um, I personally believe, because two reasons. One, it helps you to understand why X, Y, Z is going on inside of you, okay? That, that you're not crazy, you're not loopy, you know, that you're not going to get locked up and taken away to a padded cell. Uh, well, maybe some people will. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, depends on the levels, of course. But seriously, you know, it helps you at least accept then and say in your own mind, OK, I've got, you know, anxiety or I've got BPD, I've got PTSD. And if you can patch it together, you can actually see where it starts from to where it is now. And that gives you so much power and so much strength. The other thing is, as well, if you can get a diagnosis and I'm not saying that it's, you know, it's the be all and end all, but at least then. If other people are looking at you saying, well, this guy is a bit weird, that girl's a bit weird, at least you can come back and say, look, you know, I've, I've, I've got these, you know, psychotic, you know, <laughs> whatever they might be. And yes, people are going to look at you strange and look at you different. But, you know, you can be able to say that. And people are becoming a lot more accepting w within, you know, all these different things because people are now starting to talk about them. Um, and obviously, you know, with psychiatrists and, and uh, therapists and things, make sure you get somebody who is a really good therapist and you may have to shop around a little bit. We're going to talk about that, I'm sure, at length later on. Um, but it's really, really important. Sorry, Michelle, continue. It's no, just what's no, in the head. That's, that's all. Those are all very important things to yeah. add. And something that I would like to add to that is that I know it can be scary for a lot of people to yeah. see a mental health professional mm -hmm. because it is so stigmatized and yes. people think, well, I'm not crazy. I don't have to see someone, but it's, it doesn't make you crazy. It's very strong to, yeah. to, to get help for yourself. It's very healthy to mm -hmm. go in and talk to someone if you feel upset or yeah. you know whatever you're feeling it's it's okay to talk to somebody and you don't have to tell anyone you're going it's uh, you can keep it completely private and uh getting a diagnosis like you said i think some people are afraid of that because they yeah. think it's a life sentence mm -hmm. but getting a diagnosis is life changing. It can be, yes, and absolutely. Yes, it absolutely can be because like we were saying earlier, you don't know what you don't know. Correct. When I was struggling in college, not being able to understand my material because I couldn't focus, mm -hmm. that is ADD and yeah. I had no clue. And when someone finally tells you something, sometimes it can make a light switch go off and it can really put you on the right path yeah. to you know, finally be able to be yourself at the full capacity mm -hmm. and not have all of these things weighing you down. One of the things, actually, if I can just throw this in, and I know folks, you know, I know we're going to go backwards and forwards. It's the nature of the show. It's completely fine to do it this way because you may get something out of this. It's completely unrehearsed, unscripted, and this is where you tend to find those little gold nuggets. For me, I suffer with dyspraxia. Now, I didn't know this until I was 21, 22 years old. I found this out in university, okay? And it was because my principal recognized the signs and everything that were there. And basically said, you know, have you ever been tested for this? Now, I didn't even know what the thing was. I just thought I struggled with reading. I struggled with seeing black text on a white background. And I thought, quite frankly, I was dumb. You know, I, I could do certain jobs and I could work with my hands and I could be a bodybuilder. But I didn't know that actually if you were able to 
acknowledge what was going on, get some teaching on what was going on, accept that I had dyspraxia, I could then find ways around, um, you know, these battles and these struggles, you know, prime example with our new book, The Battles We All Face, um, which is behind me, and I'll do a cheap plug here, but part of the reason of this, I'm knocking things down, um, it's not a normal book, it's gold text on a black background, and people, whether they're dyspraxia or not, have actually been saying this is so much easier to read than anything else, um, so it makes a big difference, folks, when you can get the right diagnosis you can get people checking it out and you can make sure then that you've got tools in which you can adapt your life with and that's really really important so anything you want to add to that <laughs> you know just that i i completely agree with that and mm -hmm. i know then there's the other factor people say well you know i can't afford a therapist yeah. or where do i even begin to look for one but i will say the internet is really Absolutely. such a great tool we all have google at our fingertips yep. If you don't have a computer or internet, you can still go to a public library, even during COVID, yeah. you know, with a mask and, and all of that. And there are so many resources. And mm -hmm. here in the US, if you don't have insurance, there are many services that will offer therapy yeah. at a very discounted rate or for free if you are someone on Medicare or Medicaid that, that mm -hmm. we have here, programs that we have here for health insurance there are a lot of mental health professionals on on instagram too yep. and on other i'm not sure what some of these other sites are that people are using but even TikTok. Even oh yeah. Has yeah yeah mental health professionals mm -hmm. too and although you know that's no substitute for for a therapist that you can have one-on-one -on -one sessions yep. with it is a good place to start and it's free information and i've found so many helpful graphics yeah. and even memes sometimes it's that as simple as that yeah and you just you know you don't know what's out there until you look and it's just you going and typing yeah. it in and being curious and you can find so many things out there and i just really encourage anyone who is listening to this or watching this if you feel like you need to talk to someone you should take the step if you yeah. can there there are resources out there and you could even call your local city government and ask them if they know of resources if you don't know where else to look. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people that want to help you. Yeah. And getting that help is not something to be ashamed mm -hmm. of. And you definitely, you can do this. So I just want to encourage anybody. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that we should throw out now, uh, because it's almost a natural segue, we have developed a thing by the point that this goes out into air um, called the listening ear. You can check that out at thebattlesweallface.com because, because of the nature of our show, we have got a lot of resources. So for example, if you are struggling, like you say, with depression, we can get in touch and help introduce you to therapists, into uh, folks to help you through this. We've got Facebook pages as well and we have so many other materials because again, that is the purpose of Mind, Body and Soul, not just the podcast, but also through the other work that we're doing. It's to really go to that next step and really help as many people as we can. Um, Michelle, I wanna ask you as well, if it's okay, um, what was you know, some of the greatest battles that you had to go through on your mental health journey? Yeah, definitely. I think there have been quite a few. <laughs> so <laughs> the depression aspect of it, definitely. So I was actually hospitalized in college. Wow. Uh, I when you mentioned that you made yourself sick with yeah. worry before and you felt like your bones were corroding, I honestly could really relate yep. to that because it's mental and emotional pain mm -hmm. can have an effect on your physical body. Yep. It can make you sick. And I was so depressed and anxious and upset that I was physically ill. It physically wore me down and out. Oh, wow. And I was going to an urgent care for blood tests and to see so many different doctors. And they said, we don't know what's wrong with you. We <laughs> can't find anything wrong. Your tests are all coming back normal. And then when I went to the hospital, finally they said uh well here's a prescription for xanax you're extremely oh, wow. you're extremely stressed out uh you are making yourself sick basically mm -hmm. and not they weren't yeah, blaming yeah. me but they yeah, were yeah. explaining to me you know you're what it can do that the depression yeah yeah experience absolutely that depression really can make you sick to your stomach and it can 
almost give you like these invisible ailments. Yep. So I don't want anyone at home to self-diagnose, but you know, if you're experiencing things yep. that sound similar to this, it's worth talking to someone about mm -hmm. for sure. So that was really scary for me. And I missed a lot of classes for that. Oh. I missed a lot of school. I almost failed a course because I had missed so many classes mm -hmm. and that's like a $3,500 course. It's yeah. not, I mean, mental health can be so taxing. Mm -hmm. It can be taxing on your physical body. It can cost you money if you're, you yeah. know, turning to substances and mm -hmm. who hasn't done that before. I mean, I, was drinking at a certain mm -hmm. point to deal with it yep. and of course that can have consequences Absolutely. later on i was certainly not taking that xanax as it was prescribed and when you're in college and yeah. you don't know any better you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes and it's okay there's no shame in mm -hmm. that but we turn to easy comforts mm -hmm. because we don't know what else to do and i just want to tell anyone facing that that it's okay you know don't again yeah. don't be ashamed there's no shame in in a mental health journey mm -hmm. and we're all learning and yeah. you know that's actually normal and i don't encourage abusing substances <laughs> or using substances you know to treat your anxiety or depression but we've all gone through it i think at some point whether it was you know we we had toxic friendships that mm -hmm. we engaged in toxic romantic relationships we engaged in whether it was alcohol whether we were misusing our prescription medication mm -hmm. there are so many different things that people go through and and i think so many people feel alone and they yeah. say you know this isn't normal or you know there's that stigma just around like people will think i'm crazy if i say this and I think this is a little different from what I was just talking about, but something that's been helpful for me, I read something on, on a, uh, Instagram, I think it was, and someone said, when you're feeling depressed or anxious mm -hmm. or whatever it is you're feeling, just say that, say, hey, I'm feeling depressed yeah. or I'm experiencing depression right now. Because if you say, I am depressed, I am anxious, then you're physically taking yeah. on those characteristics mm -hmm. of, of the ailment. And it's easier to separate yeah. from it when yeah. you say, no, no, this isn't me. This is just what I'm feeling, regardless of whether it's chemical or whether it's, you know, in your DNA mm -hmm. from your family, or, you know, if it's just something you're experiencing from a life event. Yeah uh don't you don't have to take it on and say you know i am depression i am anxiety mm -hmm. it's just something we experience and it's okay to sit in those feelings feel the discomfort and like we said earlier try to if you can recognize yeah. where that's coming from like what is making me feel this way and you know kind of try mm -hmm. to break it down it can be really helpful I think it's it's important as well, you know, to, to acknowledge, you know, again, what you going back to what you're saying regarding medication and, and it's it, uh, for a lot of people, it's coping mechanisms. I know over here, you know, prime example in Scotland and in the UK, so many teachers end up either, you know, with severe mental health issues, anxiety, depression, uh, you know, chronic fatigue and, and so many more things that are out there um, because of what's expected. And a lot of them news for you folks end up drinking and drinking heavily sometimes just to get through the day um you know i know at my worst again like michelle was saying you're trying to find anything that is going to help you get through the day and i would love to be, and i can do this now because of the job that i'm in but you know back at the time it was very difficult to say right well you're a teacher you're an art teacher you're a speaker you're all these different things you need to figure out what it is that's causing these anxieties well you know that's great if you've got you know 10 hours to sit there and think about it. I didn't have 10 minutes oftentimes to sit there and think about these things. It was literally boom, 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 boom. And you were going and things were happening all the time. And the more things that are happening, the more overwhelming it becomes, the more overwhelming it becomes, the more things that end up, you know, you struggling with and so on. And it's a vicious, vicious cycle. So it's fantastic that we're having the opportunity to be able to talk about this. Um, and I do want to talk about powerlifting because this is something that I have got a lot of experience in, as you can see behind me. Um, and it's going to be a tremendous amount of fun because uh, the gym, and I know people will probably switch off at this point, but don't folks, because when you hear about exercise, the natural reaction for many people is to bring down the shutters because it's often people's mindset of, well, I don't want to get sweaty, don't want to put the effort in, don't want to do this. But 
What if we told you that by exercising, you could really not only improve your physical abilities, but also really change your mental abilities as well? Uh, Michelle, talk to us a little bit about how you got into powerlifting. I suppose more importantly, why you got into powerlifting. Yeah, absolutely. I love talking about this. I think <laughs> just just like myself before, I think a lot of people don't know this and I, it's becoming more common. Certainly more people are talking about yeah. it, but the effects of exercise, even just taking a walk mm -hmm. outside, even, you know, moving your body yeah. around and doing those movements, the effect that that has on your brain it releases endorphins yeah. and serotonin. And those are two components of the brain that are responsible for your happiness. And of course, you know, we're not going to be happy all the time. We're human. <laughs> that's completely normal. But just even 30 minutes of exercise yeah. and engaging your muscles. So what's happening in, in the brain and the body? I've, I've been studying this for years at this point. And again, I'm not a licensed professional. Yeah but I've read, you know, published works and things like this. So this is, this is real material mm -hmm. that you can find. What happens in the body and the mind is that you make a connection with the mind and the body. And I'm John, I'm sure you know exactly what oh, I'm yeah. talking about. <laughs> so when you're in the gym, the reason that it's, or when you're engaging in the physical activity, the reason it's so good is because it's helping you focus. Mm -hmm. So not that we're distracting ourselves from our ailments such as depression or anxiety, et cetera, but you are taking the time, dedicating the time to focus on something for yourself. It's a, it's a positive activity for your brain to focus mm -hmm. on. You're releasing those good chemicals in your brain that can help your, your levels come up of you know how you're feeling and your emotions. Yep. It can stabilize your emotions and it has an impact on you for hours after you've done mm -hmm. the activity. So it's raising your energy levels and it's decreasing your cortisol levels. So cortisol is what happens in your body. That's when your stress is rising, your cortisol levels are rising. So exercise decreases your cortisol mm -hmm. levels, thus helping you feel less stressed out. So you're getting endorphins in your brain. Your serotonin is rising, cortisol is decreasing, energy production is up when your muscles are engaging and making that connection with your brain it's just such an incredible impact that it has on your mental health and your stability and your overall well-being yep. not only are you moving your lymphatic system as well which is responsible for all of the fluid retention mm -hmm. and flushing things out of your yep. body but you are just overall making such a positive and necessary impact on your body when you're just moving around. And, and it's such a good and simple way to help yourself mm -hmm. feel better. And, you know, it's not going to happen on day one, yeah. but you'll notice, you know, even within a week, you can start noticing mm -hmm. different effects and you don't have to be working out every day in the gym. If you want to, that's great. Give your muscles a break at least two days out of the week or switch it up, do cardio on those days. But, uh, you know, I'm sure John can touch on this, Absolutely, more, yeah. but the, the power lifting aspect for me, not only was it so great for me to mm -hmm. set goals for myself yeah. and just see how strong I was and what I could do. And I didn't even believe my own strength and my mm -hmm. own abilities, yeah. but I got to the point in powerlifting where I could finally deadlift over my own body weight. That's and I could awesome. finally, yeah, I could finally squat mm -hmm. well over my body weight. Wow. And just being able to see what you can do for yourself yeah. and watching how strong you are is so empowering and so uplifting. And I really just can't recommend it enough. It's, it's, and, and there's something I was making notes there because so many things are coming to my mind as, as you were talking. Uh, and that's what the typing is, folks. And it's not me being ignorant, honestly. And I have to put them down because otherwise I'll forget them. Um, you know, th there's so many things there. And the first thing I want to touch on um, is about age because I know there are folks, and I've had this with, with friends that have said, well, you know, I'm too old to do any exercise. Let me tell you something, folks. I have got friends, and there's four of them in particular. There's, there's a husband and wife couple. Um, that go to the gym and they are both power lifters and they are both in their 70s. Now, the thing behind this is you may say, well, okay, that's a bit weird, that's a bit odd. 
But get this, a lot of people have joint problems, obviously. Now, we can say that, and Michelle, I'm sure you probably agree, the majority of people that reach a certain age have joint problems. And what that is, it's the body breaking down. Guess what? When you're sitting on your butt doing nothing, the body breaks down a lot quicker because you're not doing anything. So there's times, and don't wrong, there's times when you need rest. There are absolutely times when you need rest. But a lot of times, you can keep active. You're keeping the muscle mass gro uh, growing and developing. You're keeping your metabolism going, which after the C between 20s and 30s is when it's going to really start to decrease. Your muscle mass starts to decrease. Um, I know now into my early 30s, I've seen a change in my body already. Um, and that's something I'm having to adapt to as, obviously, as I'm, I'm traveling through my own journey. Um, but, you know, so, so don't sit there and think, oh, well, you know, I'm too old to do this. You know, I, I've got a friend that's due to hip replacements. And she said, you know, I'm putting on a lot of weight on my upper body. I said, well, can you move your arms? And she's like, yeah. I was like, have you got a wheelchair? And she's like, she's looking at me at this point like I've got three heads. It's like kind of why? I said, simple, because if you can go out before it starts getting really cold and you've got a wheelchair, well, what can you do? You can wheel yourself along and you do that for 15 minutes that way. And then you come back home. You've done 30 minutes activity. And you've done 30 minutes exercise, getting your breath going. If you look at some of um, the, it's a Special Olympians, and there's a specific title for it, and I can't think what it is off the top of my head, but those that are in wheelchairs, and they're doing the, the 100 meters and, and all these other things, the muscle mass that these guys and girls have got on them is phenomenal. So it works your body, it works your shoulders, it's working your chest, it's working your breathing. Like Michelle was saying, it gets your endorphins going, it gets the muscles going, it gets all the blood group going. Um, so it's really important if you can walk, even if it's on a stroller, even if you've got to walk around on a Zimmer, you can you you can move about and find ways that, you know, nowadays it's not it's not good enough to say, no, I can't do this. What you mean is you don't want to do this. And I get that as a professional bodybuilder at one point in time, I did not always enjoy being in the gym. I hated it some days, particularly on cold days. But, you know, what you find is there's so much more that you can do. If you look and you say, well, maybe I could do this exercise, I could do that, you know, do yoga. You know, there's so many exercise things that you can do out now. It's tremendous and so much fun. One of the things I've got to touch on with Michelle, actually, uh, because I really do appreciate this, is someone that's done leg presses of over a thousand pounds and, and lifting the heavy weights and things. One of the things that I can tell you folks is, how can I phrase this? So right, okay. it does something to you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, when you're lifting these really heavy weights, it's almost like it pumps blood. Now I'm, I'm not expecting someone in their eighties and nineties to go and deadlift 350 pounds, <laughs> but you know, I mean, I wouldn't even try that these days, but you know, it does something in your mind when you're lifting this heavy weight and there's that strain that's there, your blood's flowing, the muscles are pumping and everything's flowing around your body and you lift that weight. And it's like, Oh, wow. Now, one of the doctors that I went to see made sure to tell me, you know, I've got colitis, as many of you guys know. Um, and he said, make sure you're still doing your exercise. Because when you do your exercise and you finish in the gym and it's that big breath out, we're like, ah, that does something to your whole physical state and, you know, everything inside as well, where basically it releases all those endorphins, all those feel good emotions, like Michelle was saying, um, you know, where you'll be feeling them for days. In my case, I've been feeling them up for, for weeks because when you look good, oftentimes you really feel good as well. And it's really important that's there. What were some of the aspects that you really enjoyed about powerlifting, Michelle? How did it really change things for you? Yeah, definitely. So, now that I'm done waffling. <laughs> no, no, that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, I just wanted to start out by saying there the I haven't gone to the gym during the pandemic but mm -hmm. prior to, to COVID when I was in the gym, there were people in almost their eighties yeah. that yeah. were in the gym lifting it's alongside amazing. me there. And of course, like you said, you can be any age. The scary thing the is, is when you get an 80 year old man or woman that can actually outlift you, that's the frightening thing. <laughs> They're just, you know, body, our bodies are so capable and yeah. our minds are so capable too. And sometimes you don't know unless you really, you know, try it for yourself. Yeah. So it often comes back to what the messages we're actually telling ourselves as well. If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. It's and that's true. often what goes on. It's true. And, and that can be debilitating because when you have a narrative of, oh, I can't, I can't, then it's going to be hard to do yeah. something. And like you said, there were days when you didn't want to be in the gym. There were days when I didn't want to go. There were days when I felt 
so cranky and I just didn't want to go I was like a brat like a child like I don't want to go to the gym but you know what I forced myself to go to the gym and I felt so much better after I went I would spend maybe an hour doing you know I would start with my Mm warm-up I would do a little cardio to get my heart running and then doing the whatever if I was doing arms or legs or back chest whatever that day then you are focusing your energy on something beneficial for yourself Mm -hmm. and afterwards I I never regretted a workout yeah and the thing that I loved most about it uh, so here's something that I didn't get a chance to tell you I did martial arts in high school oh wow and I took Mm jujitsu for three years Um, I never became a black belt or anything I'm only a blue belt but I loved engaging in that way and then the the muscle soreness and the I wouldn't necessarily call it the pain but just Uh the you know the way that your muscles feel a little bit it was like a stiffness I think is the best way to describe it yeah yeah it feels so good because you're like I did something I engaged my body I engaged my muscles and I I went out and I did that for myself it feels like so, we've been hit by a bus but it, it, it feels it good it kind of does feel that way but you get up and you're like oh I can't <laughs> I can't lift my arm like to pour my coffee even because I did so many reps like, yeah but it's just it's a great feeling honestly you're like uh, I put in the work and you know I'm building something for myself and that you're not only building your muscles yeah you're building your your mental health that mm-hmm. mind body connection like we were saying before and the changes that I noticed for myself like it was easier for me to fall asleep I would have more energy the next day I um I was never really a morning person right. but when I was visiting Georgia who you met uh, uh-huh. yes when I was visiting her we woke up at 5 30 in the morning to do jazz or no way together. <laughs> For a week, I did jazzercise with her at like wow. 6 a.m., I think it was, or like 5.45. <laughs> I had so much energy throughout yeah. the whole day. I didn't even need coffee. I didn't even need to take a nap. I'm a huge coffee drinker. I love my caffeine. And uh, wow, I mean, like I said, I'm not a morning person. I don't uh-huh. like to wake up early, but when I did it gave me energy throughout my entire day. And then working wow. out in the evening helped me to sleep better at night. So would you say George is a morning person or, or an evening person? Uh, I don't think she's a morning person either, <laughs> but she and I both just love the benefits of working out. So, I mean, she's taken some evening classes too, yeah. but, and I, if you look this information up, I can't really remember what what exactly it says specifically but there are different benefits of working out in the morning versus in the evening or even in the afternoon depending on what level of energy you need to get through your day and obviously you know what you're doing for work during the day and other things that keep you busy uh it's interesting to see what how it impacts your day depending on what time of day you're working yeah. out and and we're not talking like like michelle was saying not just talking about you know building a body you are investing in you which is the biggest asset that you've got um but you know one of the things that michelle had touched on just there was about the time that you work out personally i work out first thing in the morning um and for a number of different reasons i mean for me it, it honestly i've got this down to a fine art after 20 years where you know, and, and my gym is actually off to the right of me. So I, I train from home. I do everything pretty much from home, from Morris Mansion, basically. Um, and the, the way that I do it is, you know, if, if it's a day that, I, day that I need to wash my hair. So I wash my hair sometimes three times a week. So I'm in the gym three times. And, and it's just silly things like that that get me up. I'm like, right, okay, this is structure to my day. So I get up, I'm in the gym in the morning because I know I've got a really busy day ahead. So I get it up, get it done, finished, go shower, do everything I need to, and I'm ready for my day. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling big, feeling strong. And, and that, those sort of things can really, really help you on your journey um, as well. Now, j- just as, as, as we touched on so many things earlier on, I do want to touch on one point in particular, because I know this was one of the questions um, that folks had asked when we were looking at this. One of the triggers that I pers- and there's so many triggers for um, depression and for anxiety and other things like that. But one of the things that I personally found was if I felt that my life wasn't progressing, that would be one of the big triggers for me where I'd get depressed and miserable. And it was a weird thing. I, I got to a stage where I was doing five interviews uh, a week, and I actually got to the stage at the weekend where you stop. 
that for me was what triggered the depression. I was like, oh, all of a sudden I stop. What do I do now and everything else? But getting in the gym, getting some form of exercise going, basically, if you keep yourself in motion, you know, that's when you can really energize yourself. Now, again, like we've talked about before, it is important to rest. I'm just recovering now from, from obviously the worrying myself sick and the, the effects that ha that had on me. I want to touch on that momentarily. Um, but I know that tomorrow, uh, which will be December the 7th uh, in 2020, um, you know, I know for myself that I'm now hungry and I'm ready to get back in the gym. So it's important to take those times off, but when you're ready for it and go for it and do it, you know, it's a really, really amazing thing. One of the things that Michelle had touched on just before we move on um, about how different emotions that we feel really, really affects your body. I want to give you one here now, folks, because it's the one that's in my mind and the one that I can remember straight away. Worry affects your stomach. OK, so this usually sets in in the areas that is the weakest. In my case, it's colitis. And if you look at all the different areas, so anxiety will affect the mind. Worry will directly affect the stomach, and they are two different things, even though they're part of the same family. I'll go into that in another teaching, I promise. Um, but there, there are so many different things that I encourage you to really research. Um, and like we were saying, you know, the time of day that you exercise and the things that are going on. One of the things that I want to touch on with you, Michelle, if it's okay, um, and just to get your thoughts and possibly even your experiences, when you were prescribed various medications for depression and the things that you were going on, were there any side effects that you started to notice? I, I don't think I was on the medication long enough okay. to notice any any side effects. I know there can be side yeah. effects, um, especially when you're coming off of the medication. Yeah. Um, I would say, honestly, I experienced that as a woman more with birth control than any other. <laughs> but, but that's not, that not is for true. Mental yeah. health, but yeah. uh, which that's that's a whole other podcast. But um, but I, that's actually I, a common thing. Yeah, it is very common. Um, and there are so many different kinds too. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. The, I've got a wife, folks. I understand these things. Yeah, it's good. It's good to know. Yeah. It's good information. Absolutely. Um, I just noticed that I didn't like the way that I felt on them. Uh -huh. I think I had been taking it for around a month, but okay. just, you know, my fatigue levels and feeling like emotionless and I also felt like almost out of body like uh -huh. the yes the dose yeah. was too strong for oh, me wow. even a lower dose just did not feel right to yeah. me I felt like I felt high to be uh -huh. honest yeah, with yeah. you I I didn't love that feeling I don't like to feel like I'm out of control of mm -hmm. my body and you know I just didn't feel like myself so yeah. I decided that it it wasn't for me mm -hmm. One of the things that I just want to touch on before we move on with that, and, and this is for anybody that is taking uh, medication for depression or for anything, in fact, if you have a loved one or spouse, get them to notice any changes in you, however small or large, because it's really, really important, because sometimes those small things can obviously develop into bigger things. I found that when I was on medication for colitis with me, exactly like Michelle was uh, saying there, you know, I felt out of body, it affected my personality massively, um, and did have more long term effects. So it's important to get to know these things. And if you don't have a, a loved one or someone that's close by, write them down, get up in the morning and just write down how you're feeling after you've taken your medication um it's a really really important thing michelle I, as, as we we you come full circle now a little bit how did you get into the line of work that you're in now okay <laughs> this is an interesting one so um i don't think i can share who i work for but okay, that's fine uh i work for a a major bank um okay. And I'm an, essentially an executive assistant. Mm -hmm. And someone would look at me and say, well, you were a baker and you play ukulele and you were like lifting in the gym. How on earth did you get into corporate America? And even during interviews that I have for jobs, people look at my resume and they say, you're a pastry chef. What are you doing here? But I... I love baking. I still do it. I, you know, had done it for years in professional yeah. kitchens and in the city. I transitioned out of that to bartend. Oh, wow. I really, really love bartending. I was lucky enough to work for Wiley Dufresne, who's one okay. of the most famous chefs in the world. He was a, Mich a Michelin starred chef. 
he had a restaurant in the East Village or at the Lower East Side. I'm so horrible with the boroughs in Manhattan. Or I'm sorry, Manhattan is a borough. See, you can tell I'm not from New York, but anyway, the neighborhood. Um, so I, I really loved bartending. And then eventually I said, you know, I, I love doing this. The money is great, but I want to do something more more business oriented yeah. so i decided to get my uh master's degree in business from wow. st peter's university here in jersey city and after that i was looking for corporate jobs and of course when your resume says that you've been a bartender and a pastry chef corporate jobs are <laughs> a little confused as to what you're doing looking to work for them but one of my regulars said, hey, my company is hiring. Are you interested? And wow. it was an insurance company. So I, that was my first foray into, I'm so sorry, my allergies are it's terrible. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was my first foray into corporate life after getting my master's degree. I uh, was working for the insurance company, which wow. I did for about a year and a half. And then I said, you know, I like the insurance world, but I don't think this is something I can mm -hmm. see myself necessarily doing i was um an underwriting assistant okay. and it's a it's a very slow process to build up to higher positions and i said i think i, I want something a little bit more fast-paced than yeah. this so i left insurance and i decided that i wanted to go back into hospitality because that's my background okay. and i found a job through the company that i'm with now as a contractor in a completely different branch and field of the company uh, where we were basically like a sort of like a high-end concierge service yeah. uh, and the bank clients were our clients and we would facilitate for them their all of their meetings we did all of their their tech setting up microphones setting wow. up all of their equipment we ordered their catering we set up parties for hundreds of people you know within the corporate sphere yeah. for uh if they had to present something or if they had a summit or if they were hosting a client so we had private small gatherings we had large gatherings and everything in between so that was really exciting and then i got recruited internally by the bank to work for them they had an open position huh. at the the executive level where the ceos sit wow and two years after getting my MBA, th uh, maybe three years after getting my MBA, I'm now working at on the executive level of the bank as an assistant, but still I yeah. was able to, those doors just opened for me. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so grateful. And it's just, you really never know where life is going to take you. I never saw myself being a corporate lady and I actually really like it. I love the stability of mm -hmm. it. I love having insurance and having 401k and again i i don't know if i'll transition back into yeah. to being a pastry chef full-time again and and they know that they all know that that's yeah. what i used to do but i really do love helping people in in a professional capacity and being an assistant it's something that i excel at something that i really enjoy and that's what i'm doing right now so <laughs> it's it's a really awesome thing and and that's it exactly what you said there is you just never know by taking one or two steps you know where you're going to end up um you know and it's it's an amazing thing to to have that you know opportunity obviously folks know the story and how the podcast came to be it was from one of our team members that suggested that i write a book now i had some material that just kicking around i put it together and then we were like, well, we want to go a little bit further. So we developed the Facebook group, Mind, Body and Soul. Then I reached out to a couple of people and said, oh, do you mind if I interview you and see where it was? And I really started to enjoy it. And then more and more people started to get in touch. And I was like, oh, this is, this is starting to go somewhere. And very, very quickly, you know, it ended up developing where we're interviewing, you know, and, and I'll tell you about this off air, but some, you know, of the world's biggest celebrities. And you're like, oh, my goodness, this is just really in, in this space of about eight weeks. And it's like, it was crazy how fast all this started to come and, uh, you know, all develop and everything. So, you know, you just never know what's going to open up for you if you take the opportunities and those steps. Final couple of questions I just want to ask you, Michelle. Um, how, how does depression and mental illness affect you, I suppose, now in 2020? Yeah, that's a great question, especially with a global pandemic going on. Just a on. small thing, yes. You know. Yeah, you know, no big deal. So... <laughs> Definitely. Uh, like we were saying before, it's just such everybody's world got turned upside yeah. down and it was just, we had no idea that any of this was going to happen. And 
just really threw me for a loop. And, you know, there are parts of it that I've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I, I have enjoyed working from home in some aspects because then I can go and, and grab a coffee. When I was in the office before I was at the front desk. So of course, I, yeah. Which, you know, honestly, that helped with my anxiety and depression, oh, wow. which some people would think that's counterintuitive uh -huh. to someone with anxiety being in a, a client facing role. But for me, it forced me to always be like, good morning, how are you? You know, and <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm the most bubbly person you'll ever meet, but I'm certainly not like the mm -hmm. Grinch either, where I'm just like, Ugh. I mean, I would say it's like 50 50. It depends yeah. on the day. But <laughs> Uh, I liked being in that role and it's diff it's definitely different being at home because I don't have I'm not on zoom calls for my mm -hmm. job um, so I don't have that client interaction anymore um, but just really interesting uh, I think some days are kind of feel harder than others yeah, because yeah. you're just sitting around like oh god what am I gonna do like I can't go here I can't go there who am I going to talk to? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to be very cognizant of my mental health and make sure yeah. that I'm not slipping into <laughs> a dark place and making sure to talk to my therapist when I need yeah. to talk to friends. Like friends are the biggest, I, I wouldn't be where I am without yeah. my friends because they just help so much. We, we all need people. And this, as the saying goes, no man is an Island in and yep. of himself. And I just think that's so true and it's so good to have other people to rely on. Um, and you know, it's hard to see our friends right now and our families. And I know everybody can't wait for when we can have a little bit of normalcy restored, but just um, making sure to, you know, go out for a walk if I can. Yeah. And because I haven't been working out as much, honestly, not, not having the gym to go mm -hmm. to has really you know that was like a big blow for me yeah. so i do miss that and I, my boyfriend is a personal trainer so and oh, he's wow. actually he's a professional wrestler as well uh -huh. so having him is great because he has all of these workouts and we can work out together that's awesome and we live together so there's like it's you know really low yeah. risk and it's good to to have someone like that to to motivate you and say hey you haven't worked out in like a week maybe you should <laughs> go get on the yoga mat and like use the weights but we just bought a pull-up bar actually that's just in the door here oh nice um but yeah, I mean, I would say it's definitely been hard. 2020 yeah. has been very hard mental health wise. There are some days where it just feels impossible. And I think that's normal for people right now yeah. because things are the way they are. And I just try to be mindful of that. And, mm -hmm. you know. I, I think absolutely, uh, you know, point to touch on is, and for, for comfort for anybody that's feeling what Michelle was describing there is you have to remember that I know that they, they liken it to the flu, okay? Now, if you catch the flu, obviously, you get really, really sick. And if you've got the immunization, you have less chance of getting it really, really ill. But that's kind of the same thing of what we're going through 2020, just on an external global scale. And what I mean by that is we're going through things that haven't been seen in the last 100, 150 years. Now, if you look back through history, pretty much, and I love doing this, by the way, folks, but if you look back through history, every 100 or 150 years, probably for the last, I don't know how many, probably you know, 2,000 years, there has been something that has happened time after time after time after time. And we're just the ones now in 2020 that are experiencing this. And it is something completely different, completely alien to it. You know, what we're still trying to adjust, it hasn't affected Katie and I that much because we work from home anyway. So the most that I see, folks, is when I see the courier. That's it. But it is a strange thing when the courier literally throws your package at you and then runs off down the driveway. That I haven't quite adapted to yet. Um, and that is not an excuse, by the way. That is <laughs> the actual truth. It was Amazon that did that this morning. Um, but, you know, and these are, these are all things that we're trying to adapt to and how we're going to spend Christmas and how we're going to do this and how we're going to, you know, and I think sometimes the best thing that we can do is just try as, as much as it's very, very difficult, but trying to remain where we are right here, right now, not trying to look too far in the future, um, but trying to have a focus that says, okay, what can I do here maybe in the next five minutes? And, and just trying to build up somewhat of a routine in your life. What can you learn? What can you study? When have you ever been given paid vacation 
um, in, in the, the sum that it is now. And like I've said to people since the beginning, use this time wisely because you may never have it again. You know, next week it may all be sorted and everything fixed. It probably won't be. But, you know, it, it, it's an opportunity that's there and presenting itself to you. And it's the ones that can adapt that are going to survive and, and thrive and do all the other stuff that's there. So it's really great, Michelle, that so many you know positive things that are going on, that you've got the friends, that you've got your boyfriend, certainly in our professional wrestling is a whole nother side. Um, you know, and, it, and it's an amazing, amazing thing. Is there anything you want to touch on before we wrap up today's show? I'm trying to think if there's anything I wanted to <laughs> add. Just, you know, just like you were saying, I mean, I know this is such a hard time. A lot of people have lost their jobs. We, two people I know have passed away due to wow. COVID. It's, it's really horrible. So yeah. many people have passed away. So many people are sick. It's a, it's a scary time for, for people right now. And I don't want to be one of these people that's like, oh, love and light, because that tends yeah. to be like total BS. But yeah. if you can try to stay present as much as you can, I know it, it's hard to stay present when it we is. feel kind of kind of crappy yeah. and this is not a fun time. But if there's anything you can focus on to be grateful for, I've tried to start a gratitude journal mm -hmm. and it does help trying to focus on, you know, the yeah. good things that I have just trying to even if it's something as small as hey i got out of bed today yeah that absolutely could be a big a yeah. big thing for someone yeah. even if it's just hey i opened my blinds or hey i brushed my teeth or hey i i poured myself a cup of water i yeah. drank water this morning it can be something so small mm -hmm. you can just even remind yourself hey you know i'm breathing and it yeah. might it might suck to be here right now and we all you know we're all feeling that in different ways, but any small thing that yeah. you can say, you know what, that is, that is a good thing that I have. We can all find something that can help us stay on like a kind of like an even plane. So yeah. we're not slipping into that. Like Those dark gloom. places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, I mean, it, you know, the realities are, you know, I mean, and I, I'm, neither of us are those, you know, weird, creepy coaches that say, oh, you know, just just pray it through and just be passionate about it and everything yeah, else. No. Guys, <laughs> seriously, if you're feeling like crap, trust me, you know, and, and I'm one of these people for whatever reason that I seem to feel the negative a lot more. And people struggle to believe that about me. I am not Mr. Positivity. Um, a lot of the time I really have to work at doing it. Um, but, you know, and again, you know, M Michelle, for, for you something that may help because I, and I, again, I encourage people to do this. I, I am a one that finds list building so great for momentum. Now I normally do between three and five things. And it's especially if I'm feeling garbage, I try to do one thing um, and it's usually get out of bed. Um, but what I try and do is probably each day set between three and five things. And again, it can be as simple as you do two things that are easy. If you've got a, if you've got a list of five and it could be get out of bed, have breakfast. Now, why on earth would I do that? Because obviously you're going to take off while I got out of bed. And, and, and I'm assuming you're going to take off, you've got breakfast. Well, it builds momentum because you've got two ticks next to your lists. So you've only got to do three other things. And if, if one of them are bigger tasks, then you know that's a big thing, but you've already got momentum for it. So what you find is if you do these things, so it could be, I'm just going to pick generic things like get out of bed, shower, have breakfast, um, tidy the house. Uh, or tidy the living room and send an email. All right, well, you've just done five things in one day. Get this, at the end of the week, if you manage to do five things each day, that's 25 things that you take off your list. Now you might think, well, that's great, but how many times can I tidy the house? But what if one day you said, okay, well, I wanna design, I wanna learn more about a website. I wanna learn more about history. I wanna learn more about cooking or bakery or whatever it might be. And then you start building things into your, um, learning bank, your knowledge bank. Now you're starting to develop bigger and bigger lists and bigger, bigger goals. And before you know it, your momentum is really powering through, really striving through, and you start feeling more and more positive. It's like trying to shift a giant boulder. Initially, it's really difficult, but once you get that damn thing moving, it is going to be soaring. It's going to be flying forward. And it doesn't mean there's, there's not going to be days when you're just feeling great all the time, mm -hmm. but there are going to be more days that you, you get up and like myself in the morning, I'm like, yes, because I know I've got websites to build and I've got this, but it's stuff to do that's taking me certainly to the next goal. And I encourage you to do that in your own self. So I hope that really helps you guys. And, uh, and I hope that helps Michelle as well. Is there anything that you want to add just before we wrap up today's show, Michelle? 
No, I think we covered a, a <laughs> lot of interesting topics and thank you so much for having me on the podcast. This was a great first podcast experience. It's It's been awesome and I've loved it and we've definitely got to have you back on the show because again, like we've said to all of our guests, there is so much more to each one of our guests and this in some ways is an introduction to who the person is and to all those different things. And I want to thank so much to, to Michelle for being our special guest today. And folks, if you've enjoyed the show, as always, don't forget to comment. Let us know if you're struggling. Reach out. The, the listening ear is open. You can get in touch with us at thebattlesweallface.com, where you can check out our books. You can check out our audio material and, and obviously the blog that Katie's writing as well. She's got a very different perspective, which is really, really cool, really awesome. Um, and I think you'll thoroughly love it. There's a brand new website there as well that will be out by the time that this airs. So I can say that now. Um, but don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Tell a friend because it might be the very, very thing that helps them and it will certainly help us as well. And if you've enjoyed it, of course, tell us. So folks, I have been your host, John Morris. This has been the wonderful and lovely Michelle Light. This has been the Mind, Body and Soul podcast where we help you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. We're out of time. Take care. God bless. I'll see you next time. Well, there we go.